As we continue talking about distribution, I have my friend here, Carla Ortiz, who's VP of marketing, marketing for Vidya. And there's a lot of things that you don't know or things that you're misinformed about when it comes to distributing your music or having a distributor that distributes your music for you. Uh, unless you're a top priority artist that's on a major distributor or an independent distributor that's a high priority, there's information that you simply just wouldn't get because you're not at that level. So we're gonna unpack all that right now and share these things that you would never know because if you're with a TuneCore or a CD Baby, there's not information that you would know that if you were with another independent uh, distributor or even a major distributor that they would be able to share with you to help guide you and navigate you through your music being distributed. So Carla is gonna help us break it all down in a simple form so you can understand in clarity what it means to be distributed how to be distributed effectively, and all the things that go on to, during the process of your music being distributed. Correct? Yeah. Cool. So let's start about an artist. Uh, how does an artist decide that a uh, distributor is the perfect fit for them and their music? Well, I think that it's important to identify what it is that your goals are, essentially, and what you're trying to achieve with the release of your content, right? Well, what about an artist that just says, I just want the world to know my name, I want everybody to get familiar with my music? I mean, most typically, artists tend to gravitate towards a TuneCore or a CD Baby, which is natural because mm -hmm. it's an open platform. You can sign up, you can, you know, upload your content, fill in your details, and, you know, get your music out to market. However, there's no additional resources or anyone there to help kind of guide you or coach you along the way to inform you about the timelines and, you know, the nuances that um, come into play as it relates to each and every individual major DSP player out there. Right. So you have to be very meticulous about if you're trying to, you know, get your music out there and be successful, you have to inform yourself and equip yourself with the right team to make yourself successful, essentially. And you have or to at have least a set yourself up for success. Yeah. And have a plan other than, because I think most people, especially uh, independent and young artists, they don't know all the things that they need to know, right? right. So and most people don't. I mean, even in this industry, a lot of people don't understand or know, you know, what the uh, details are and, and what is pertinent for, you know, say an Apple Music versus a Spotify versus a SoundCloud versus an Amazon Music and there's so many other outlets what out there. What do you there. mean by that? What is pertinent to each one? So each and every, you know, DSP has, you know, specific things that they're looking for, um, specific information that they want to be privy to uh, in order for them to feature your content, playlist you, um, the way in which that they, you know, take in and absorb that content or information is very different from every other DSP. So understanding that first part is extremely important and mm -hmm. having someone that's on the team and at a company that can help support you to provide that information in the manner that it needs to be delivered is right. like step one, which is very, very detailed and layered. Right. Um, but then beyond that, you know, knowing if they're looking for the next Afrobeat artist and that's their huge focus right now. They've just launched this new Afrobeat, you know, playlist or if they have this huge, you know, say Black History Month campaign or Latin Heritage Month campaign, knowing in advance what it is that they're looking for and timing your content to come out at the time in which they're going right. to want to feature it is extremely important. Right. Because once your content is out there, for the most part, if it hasn't been presented to them in advance, the likelihood of them featuring it after the fact is not likely right. unless it's on and popping, right. you know, for whatever said reason, mm -hmm. because you've got these other drivers in place. But again, as a, you know, up and coming artist, the likelihood of that is not likely you're right. getting started. Right. So you want to, you know, position yourself and set yourself up, you know, um, in the best way possible. So a good distributor then can help you strategize the release. Correct. So what can an independent artist do with their distributor? to help the distributor excite the DSPs of their release and inform them of their release. So if I'm an independent artist, I really wanna break this down in the most simple form. Mm -hmm. You're a distributor, mm -hmm. I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. I got a song, I think it's the greatest song ever because everybody thinks their music is the best music right. ever, right? I wanna put my song out, I come and talk to you guys. You guys say, yeah, we think there's something here. We yeah. wanna put this music out. Now walk me through the, through the path of what happens from the day you say, I would like to put your music out and be your distributor. Right, so I think the number one thing as part of that is that every single artist and every artist conversation that I tend to have is that the artist has finished you know, a single, an EP, an album, whatever it is, and they want to release it now, tomorrow, right. the next day. And they're just so excited or they're kind of like over you know, this whole um, 
you know, set of content that they recorded whenever it was recorded and they want to move on already. Right. And the thing that you have to know is that, you know, everything takes time. And even, for example, you know, um, being able to hit the algorithmic playlist on Spotify, you have to be about, you know, seven to ten days out in terms of our submission of your content and us alerting them that your content is coming. Right. So at a minimum, we're talking about, you know, a two to four to six week time frame right. so that we can just plan accordingly right. and figure out, you know, what's your content about? Um, what would be the, te the best time frame in which, you know, that content should be hitting the market? Mm -hmm. Are there certain things that are, you know, going to be happening in pop culture um, that would really help align or make that content more important and have, you know, a higher perceived value mm -hmm. because of what it's aligned with? Mm -hmm. um, and being able to get any additional information about you as an artist, you know, do you have regular residencies in your hometown? You know, do you have a pretty significant social media presence? Right. Um, do you have a certain collaboration with some other up and coming developing artists that are, you know, getting a, a good amount of buzz on, you know, around or established them? artists. Right. Exactly. All of those things are, you know, the sort of like nuts and bolts to what we would need to be able to then educate, you know, the curator who has no clue who you are right. and help them understand why your music's important, mm -hmm. why it's, an, you know, a significant for them to place it or feature it wherever they can right. and therefore, you know, help, again, equip you for success, right. you know, and communicate everything that's going on around mm -hmm. you with everyone else that needs to know exactly what it is that's happening with right. them and why they should be excited. What do you think is the biggest misconception for artists once they get a deal with a distributor what do they expect for you guys to do that's not really your job? So I think the biggest misconception because, you know, our team is a very um, educated, uh, you know, team with uh, years of experience, over 15 years of experience. So a lot of people uh, assume that we are acting as a label or that we have the functionality and capabilities of a label. Meanwhile, we are through and through, you know, a tech first distributor. Um, with that being the case, you know, we view it very much not as label services but more so as uh, content marketing and strategy. So I think a lot of artists tend to assume that we're going to just help them become success stories mm. overnight or that we're going to, you know, roll out all sorts of, you know, large scale campaigns, billboards and red carpet events right. when that's really not what we do. But that's your company, right? Right. Is this for all independent distributors? I would say for the most part, yeah. I mean, every major independent distributor doesn't necessarily have, you know, this um, robust end-to-end, -end, uh, you know, marketing division with, you know, PR, radio, right. promo, et cetera. That's what a major label is about. That's right. why a lot of folks like to, you know, go to a major label and get mm -hmm. that kind of support and resource mm -hmm. uh, or multiple resources. But that doesn't mean you can't be successful right. because I feel like what we do provide is, you know, the core... Um, support resources to help you know get your music out there drive you know visibility mm -hmm. exposure fan acquisition and all of those mm -hmm. you know sort of um, core um, support uh, mechanisms to get right. you know you essentially to market so to elaborate on the clear path of having your music distributed by a distributor I, I connect with you guys mm -hmm. or, a dis or a distributor mm -hmm. give you guys the music we have an arrangement. Well, I think starting there, so you have to identify exactly what body of work you're going to be releasing. Right. And then once you've identified the full body of work, whether that's an EP or an LP, um, figuring out and establishing what the single is going to be, and then what visual content is going right. to accompany that, because that's extremely important. We're living in a video first world right now. Right. And if you don't have video content to support your album, mm -hmm. how are people going to visually experience what you've put together? Right. And I think that's something that a lot of independent artists miss mm -hmm. or they try to like, you know, go the inexpensive way and not spend money on getting some sort of a visual creative mm -hmm. put together. Right. And that's extremely important because when mm -hmm. you think about YouTube, that's the second largest um, search right. engine out right. there. And, and I, I think one tip that maybe you will endorse is that a lot of people when they do put out their music, if they don't have the official music video, they don't put out a video on YouTube with their song on it, whether it's a lyric video, whether it's right. just a still picture with their song, not understanding how valuable having your song on YouTube can be. Right. Can you elaborate on that? That's, that's important to have your song on YouTube, even if it's not an official music video, correct? Yeah, no, 100%. I think over the past uh, 12 months, YouTube Music in particular has made incredible strides in terms of, you know, making it clear that if you have visual content uh, to support your audio, it actually drives streams by 40%.
Right. And not only that, but Spotify, for example, has now had a huge emphasis on what's called canvas video, which is when you're watching uh, or when you're listening to a song on, on Spotify and you look at your phone, it actually shows an eight minute or sorry, an eight second um, loop of a visual yeah. that's supposed to companion and give, you know, the user right. and the fan, you know, a visual experience of right. what they're listening to. Right. And that actually also performs around, you know, 25 to, you know, 35 percent higher than audio content on Spotify that doesn't have canvas video. Right. So you don't need to have an official music video with your song. Just have your song on YouTube. If you don't, then you're not effectively marketing and distributing your music. Right. So sign with a, a, a distributor. Identify your content. Identify the content you want to release. Right. Then you put the, the marketing materials around it, whether it's video, graphics, photographs, right. all the things the that roll out. The release and with rollout it. timeline right. is extremely important. Right. Then you plan the release. Give yourself four to six weeks. Right. A whole plan to roll out. Right. And then there you go. You put your music out and it's been distributed. Right. And now what you have to do next is support your content through your social media make sure everyone knows that your content is available let them know where it's available right um have a link on your bio correct where it goes to that where they can purchase it they can listen to it right make sure that everything that you're putting out it all tells the same story and comes back to the same thing and stays on brand right and the other thing you know going back to brand is perceived mm -hmm. value i feel like one of the core pillars of the music business is perceived value and the way that you can help elevate that is making sure you have, you know, great visuals, great photography, um, you know, a, a solid designer that, you know, you can either uh, recruit if they're your friends or, you know, through a local um, university or program that you can probably get in touch with and make sure that all of your visuals on all of your social profiles are cohesive and aligned with whatever imaging that you're putting out there that's correlated with your, you know, content that you're being, you're releasing. Is there a platform that you can recommend for an upcoming artist where they can go and get some of their graphics designed? Uh, you know, I know that there's uh, Canva, for example, and there's a lot of um, social media content that you can actually create yourself, you yep. know, to create um, not only timeline, but Instagram story and Facebook story content mm -hmm. to promote. Mm -hmm. And that deems um, effective. That's very effective and right. you have complete creative control. Um, and it's very simple and easy to use. The other thing too though that I want to touch upon is TikTok. And I think, right. you know, making sure, especially in today's day and age, with um, a video app like that that's global and where a lot of developing and new artists are seeing a lot of success, you can actually natively upload your audio there. So let's yep. say if you wanted to just test out, you know, your song and see if it gets any traction or if anyone's kind of interested in it, you can actually natively upload it before you release it to every distributor. Um, and then, you know, making sure that you have a presence there, making sure that you're engaging with other users on that platform, uh, I think is a tremendous help to yourself. It's one of the only social media networks today where you can actually grow your following by the thousands mm -hmm. within days and weeks. Mm -hmm. So um, I highly encourage, you know, every developing artist to, you know, get active on TikTok right. and explore, right. you know, and, and play around with it. Now, why should somebody elect to stay or remain or go the independent route? What are, the, what are the, the benefit and the pros of being an independent artist? There's so many. So I think, you know, and you know this, I worked at a major label for a long time, a decade plus. And the beauty about being independent is creative control. It's the freedom to move, ebb and flow, and choose the music that you want to release that represents you and essentially being authentic and true to who you are. Um, and seeing you know your whole self come to fruition mm -hmm. you have nobody dictating or telling you how you know to brand yourself how to you know record how to do anything really mm -hmm. um, you also uh, are able to collect you know the most amount possible you don't have all of these percentages that are you know being split um, amongst multiple stakeholders you are the primary stakeholder and you elect who you want to share that wealth with um, and then you also have the ability to hire and recruit whoever you want to be a part of your project, mm -hmm. which is a beautiful thing. And mm -hmm. there's, you know, so many talented, incredible um, professionals in this industry today, um, you know, that can, you know, help support you that right. you really don't have to go the major label route. Right. You can, you know, truly do and it And if yourself. you're not happy, you can fire your distributor. Correct. Right. Correct. You can, <laughs> you know, change. Go and somewhere else. Exactly. Right. Unlike a major label, you Correct. can't. You're stuck. Locked in. For the term that has been dictated by that agreement. Right. Until it's over. Right. So there you have it. If you want to go independent, there's a lot of pros and a lot of benefit to being independent. And I think we just identified a lot of them right there. So if you're not 100% understanding of what it is to be an independent artist and distribute music so that you can win big in the music, 
then you might need to watch this video again.